I am speaking with Kaylin Kastetter of the Kastetter Cannabis Group. We have finally legalized recreational marijuana in New York, but where exactly are we in the process of creating a program? Yeah, so the Cannabis Control Board is, is now fully appointed, and they're going to oversee the Office of Cannabis Management, which will be regulating uh, cannabinoid hemp, adult use cannabis, and the medical cannabis program. Uh, so it's a very exciting development because you know before the uh, medical program and the cannabinoid hemp program was in um, the uh, Department of Health and didn't have as much resources to really you know carry out a full adult use cannabis program. And so now we can start to see um, hiring in the Office of Cannabis Management and regulations actually be developed, um, you know, hopefully for uh, review by the public. Uh, early next year. So it's exciting because entrepreneurs throughout the state are really waiting to have an opportunity at a multi-billion dollar marketplace, and the regulatory structure has to be in place for them to do so. So taking a look at the calendar, how far exactly would you say that we are from having a fully running program in New York State? The first step really is for the board to be formed and uh, for the Office of Cannabis Management to start working on this, right? Um, but I don't think it's going to be less than a year from now before we actually see licenses awarded and, um, you know, storefronts, cultivators begin operation. Um, that's really almost best case scenario, right, is that uh, you have regulations developed and there's public comment periods that go through and, you know, they're settled by the end of spring next year, right? Um, and the state should move pretty quickly to then uh, start to license applicants, especially social equity applicants, small businesses, because they don't really have the luxury of waiting, you know, whether it's sitting on property or, you know, paying employees to, to enter the industry. Um, so best case scenario, if the state moves and has, you know, a mandate from the top to do so, uh, we can see, you know, the industry start in the marketplace start to form next summer, the end of next summer. So for people in business, New York is somewhat known for high regulations, high taxes, mm -hmm. standards and things like that. How do you think regulation will affect the recreational marijuana business, if at all? And that's a that's a huge risk, right? And it's definitely on the table that that happens in New York. And they call it regulatory capture, where you know the the regulations really make it untenable for small businesses to succeed, right? And the only people who win in those situations are the large corporate cannabis uh, companies, where they have teams of lawyers and they're big enough and they have economies of scale that they can kind of um, you know deal with the, the cost of compliance. Um, but we have really good leadership at the OCM, and I was really pleased to see. Uh, Governor Hochul appoint Chris Alexander as executive director, senior policy advisor Axel Burnaby. I mean, you know, they have been involved in the, the you know policy developments around cannabis for years now. You know, over five years. They understand what it takes to you know balance public safety and also the needs of small businesses. So I'm hopeful. I'm cautiously optimistic that New York you know won't go down that path and have very cost, you know, costly compliance regulations, and also high tax structures. There is a, a tax provision in there, the cultivation tax, which was championed by Governor Cuomo. Uh, that'd be great if the legislature would do away with uh, ahead of, you know, any sort of regulatory rollout. Um, but the, the reality is, is that one of the major goals of the MRTA is to create an equitable cannabis marketplace. And you can't do that without identifying the barriers to entry and working to lower them. One of them is capital. The other one is going to be compliance. Now, how exactly would that tax structure and regulation affect someone who's trying to start a recreational marijuana business in New York? Yeah, so the uh, a very strange uh, tax scheme was put into place at, at kind of the last minute of the MRTA that falls on the cultivation and distribution tier. And what it does is it essentially calculates the amount of milligrams of THC in a product or flower um, and levies a tax. Um, on that product at, at the wholesale level. And the problem with that is that THC levels, especially in flour, can fluctuate throughout the crop. And it, it's not exact, you know, to the milligram. It's really difficult to calculate that. Not only does it create a lot of burdens in terms of having the product tested and figuring out the lots, but also could create an entire mess for tax calculation and collection. Um, it's a lot easier just to look at the other part of the tax structure, which is a retail surcharge of 9.25%. Um, part of which goes back to the municipalities. Uh, you could raise that a few more points or just leave it as it is. And I think that's really going to get you the most simple tax structure. Um, when Governor Cuomo and um, the uh, director of cannabis programs at that time, from Bierenbaum, explained why they you know, wanted a THC tax structure, they used the word temperance, terminal temperance, right? Uh, but we're past prohibition. We're past the lies of 
you know, uh, reef for madness. So I don't really think we need to be uh, promoting temperance, that we should be looking at public health and making sure that these products are safe and tested. And the last thing I wanted to know is how will a recreational marijuana program help New York State and the individual New Yorker financially? Yeah, what, so beyond the tax revenue that, that the implications that come into New York State, which will be significant, the huge thing about creating a new adult use cannabis industry is you are developing opportunities for entrepreneurs and hopefully small business entrepreneurs, just like the craft beverage industry had done um, throughout the state in every single corner of the state, from Niagara Falls and Buffalo and, and Brooklyn and Harlem. Uh, I'm in Binghamton right now. And so if the regulations are written in a way that empowers small businesses and allows you know, a lot of licenses to be awarded, uh, then you're going to see multi tens of billions of dollars worth of economic impact throughout the state. It could revitalize some towns in upstate New York and, like I said, give generational wealth opportunities to communities and, and, and entrepreneurs who have not had that opportunity in any other industry so far. All right. Kaylin Kastetter, the managing director of the Kastetter Cannabis Group. I appreciate your time.